everybody, Tiffany Solorio here for Live with Prima. Welcome back to another video. I am going to be altering a paintbrush and I haven't done this in quite some time and I love altering paintbrushes. It's so much fun. And I am starting off by adding some baby powder or you can use cornstarch to the IOD molds. This just helps the clay lift up from the mold a little bit easier and uh, I found this tip on YouTube. So I will have the product list down below so be sure to check it out. I cannot remember what the product numbers are for these. And I'm just using some paper clay that I got at the craft store. I ran out of the IOD uh, paper clay and I'm just kind of working it in my hands to get it you know a little bit uh, softer and then I roll it into like a snake shape and then I lay it on the shape that I want and as you could see I'm patting it down and then using my finger to scrape off the excess and then I will do that to the same on uh, the right here I roll it into a snake type shape and then I just press it down and a little firm but not you know too firm because you don't want a big indention and then I'm just uh, scraping my finger across the clay and it helps get the excess off so I let these sit for probably about five minutes then how I get them out so that they don't break or I'm trying to do that anyways is I work and bend the silicone mold and just lightly lift up the clay as you could see here and I'm doing it very slowly I, the video is sped up uh, but I am doing it slow and I do the same to the other one I pull one side and then kind of work it and bend it to help uh, release that clay so the next thing I'm doing is I am prepping my paintbrush and this is just one that I got I think at Harbor Freight I want to say and it's nothing special but I prep it with some gesso and I do a couple coats of that and I had this gold crackle on my desk and I had something in mind but then as I kept creating I changed my mind but I wanted to show you that um, I did add it but then I painted over it and added uh, some white crackle paste in um, a little bit and I add the crackle paste with a little palette knife. I find with doing it with a paintbrush, it doesn't get very good cracks. And after it dried, I am now painting over it with some gesso. I do it very lightly, not you know a really thick coat or anything because I am gonna add the white crackle paste too and then a lot of different colors and other mediums. So I'm not too worried if it's not covered up completely. And here I am adding the white crackle paste. So I'm gonna like this a lot better. I like to add variations uh, with the crackle paste. So I like to put some in some places thicker and thinner in others. That way I get um, really small cracks in some areas and then larger cracks in other areas. I think it looks really nice on a finished project. And a lot of this is gonna be covered up, but it definitely helps uh, create a lot of interest and um, it adds to the end project. So you wanna let your clay pieces dry uh, probably for about a day or two, depending on what you use. I know there's fast drying clay and different types of clay, but this one I let dry probably for almost two days. I made these a couple days ago. Uh, but I wanted to use them for this project. So I am taking some heavy body gel and adding a generous amount to the back of these clay pieces and I add them to my paintbrush and it gives a lot of interest and it creates a whole new look for the paintbrush. You don't have to do this but I just I don't know out of habit or something I am going to dry brush on some gesso very lightly I'm not you know being too particular and getting in all the little areas but I just wanted to give it a little coat so I have this frame here that I was going to use on a different project a while ago and I saved it and I thought it would go perfect there and again I'm using the heavy body gel it works perfect and everything holds so nice although it does take a while to dry but your project is going to hold up really well 
So the resin frame is from Prima and then the little watch, uh, pocket watch piece is from Finnebear and it's a little one. So there comes two in a pack and then I'm going to add a lot of the, well, not a lot, a few of these little mechanical pieces. And again, I will have a list of supplies down below so you could check it out and get what you want. And you don't have to use, um, you know, these pieces, you can use different items, you know, screws and, you know, different things that you have uh, in your junk drawer or your um, garage. I think that would give a lot of interest to your project as well. And I add these all with a heavy body gel. And then these are the little tiny stars. I love these. And I add those to the bottom there. You're going to want to let this dry a little bit. And I am going to add some heavy body gel randomly uh, where I'm going to put some of the art stones. So I use the regular art stones and then a tiny little bit of the mini art stones just to give a little bit more texture. And so I am just adding the heavy body gel where I want and then that way it will catch all of the art stones when I pour it on. You could see here I'm just pouring the art stones on, not really, you know, caring and then just kind of pushing them in that gel. You want to do kind of a generous amount so that they can stick into the gel. And as you could see, I didn't let um, my project dry enough before moving on to the next step. It's because I'm very impatient. So again i am adding the mini art stones now to get in all the little places where the uh, art stones left space i didn't want a lot of uh, empty space where i had all the art stones i wanted a lot of texture um, in this particular spot so again you probably should let it dry a lot longer than i did but I am taking some gesso and just painting over it. And I lightly paint over, paint over the uh, art stones because, I, again, I didn't let it dry quite enough time because I am very impatient. Um, but this way, all of my sprays and other mediums that I'm going to add is going to uh, sit nicely on the project. I wanted the Precious Stone Color Bloom Spray to... Uh, spread nicely and get in all of the different grooves of where the art stones are so I add water so you're gonna see me adding not a ton of water but a very generous amount generous amount so that it spreads and uh, gets in all of those grooves like I said and I tilt it back and forth so that it can uh, run where it wants to and again get in all of those details and um, I like doing this because then it, it creates more depth to your project when you let it go where it wants to. So I am adding some, I believe this is Dragonfly Blue, and I'm running out sadly, I need to get some more, but I wanted to add this color on top. And I just continue to add different layers of colors and I go back and forth between the color and the water and then between the um, dragonfly blue and the precious stone. So you can see here I'm adding the water and then I'm going to let it run. And I'm holding all of my embellishments in place because, again, I did not let them dry. Uh, super impatient, but that's okay. It's dry now. It's the next day. <laughs> so I'm adding some more color. And I think this is what takes the most time is just... Um, taking time to get the color how you want and letting it go into all the different grooves and different places where you want to add depth because a darker color will add a lot of depth. So now to add highlights, uh, I am taking some of the Vintage Silk Opal Magic Wax and I think it's Opal Magic. Yeah, it's Opal Magic Wax. And I am taking a paintbrush and just highlighting some of those details that are um, I want to stand out. It's a little hard to tell in the video, but it does add a lot of uh, detail and interest to the project because adding the darker color um, 
where all the grooves are and in the art stones and all that then adding the lighter color on top it really adds a lot of dimension and depth to your project so I decided that I wanted even more color and I'm adding the precious stone again first because I wanted the um, I wanted more depth is so when you add the darker color and it gets into all those grooves and crevices it adds a lot of depth to your project and then I'm adding the um, what is this color again the dragonfly blue <laughs> and because I added the wax it is just kind of beating up so you definitely want to wait to add the wax until the very end I learned my lesson it's not a big deal as you could see it's gonna turn out just fine uh, but now I am adding some rust paste and I went back and forth between adding the rust paste and not adding it but I just felt that my project needed just something else so with the little screws and the other little metal pieces I have on the project, I thought it would be really nice to add the rust paste um, as if it were sitting there for a while. And so I add it uh, with a little bit of water so that it helps spread it out because I don't want um, a lot of the rust in one area. I want it to blend out and look natural. So I add water, you can see here. And I think this again is another thing that takes time because you have to keep adding um, the paste, the rust paste and adding water so it blends out nicely and then dabbing some off and then adding some more. So you just have to play around and um, be patient because the, the more that you play around with it, the better it's going to look. So you could see here it's starting to look a little natural because rust, if something rusts, it's not going to be just one blob of rust. At least I don't think so. I think that it kind of blends out and um, onto whatever is getting rusty. And that's why I am doing this. So it hopefully looks a little bit natural. So again, it takes quite some time. And I do have a baby wipe. That's what you see is a baby wipe when I'm dabbing it off. And um, then I add a little bit more color and then it kind of just goes away, but then I add more rust. And, and I ended up going in with a little bit of lime wedge uh, color bloom spray because when the rust paste and the dragonfly blue mixed together, it kind of created that, um, that lime color. And I wanted to highlight that and add a little bit more of that lime color. And let's see. Well, here again with the Opal Magic Wax. And I'm just highlighting again some of those areas. And you want to let the rust paste and the Color Bloom spray dry before you add the um, uh, the wax. Or else it's just kind of going to blend together. You can definitely add the wax with your finger. Uh, you can also add it with a smaller flat brush. Uh, I'm using... A little round brush which a flat brush I think would work a little bit better um, but that's okay it's what I had and I try to use the same brushes for the same things if that makes sense like if I use one brush for the wax I want to keep it for the wax and then the rust paste as well because those two mediums will ruin your brushes so you want to make sure that you have a couple brushes that um, you have specifically for those things so I added a little bit more of the precious stone and then I'm taking this wire and I don't even know why I have this wire, but I do. I wrap it around the clay piece and the paintbrush, three different spots. So the top, the middle, and then a, the next groove over. I don't know if that even makes sense. <laughs> But uh, I wrap it around and then I twist the back so that it stays nicely. And then I add just a little light coat of gesso. And then I'm going to take the rust paste and kind of make it a little rusty. So I'm going to add it with a little bit of water. So again, it blends out. And you can see there. I just thought it was a nice little detail to finish the project. 
And that will complete the project for today. I hope you guys enjoyed and I felt like I was rambling a lot so I apologize for that. Uh, I hope you guys learned something new and if you are ever inspired by uh, one of our projects and you make your own, I hope you share it on Create with Prima on Facebook and I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!